Lieutenant Richard Tufts, United States Navy, do make this account of my perilous journey in the territory of Florida in the year 1840. I knew nothing of Florida, save for this crude map which told me little of the risky mission on which I was embarked. But I did know that here was the scene of the most bitter war in our history, the war against a savage and bloodthirsty foe, the Seminole Indian. For seven years now, the Red Man had defeated the total strength of our forces and had all but frustrated the strategy of our greatest general, Zachary Taylor. I had been ordered to service in his command whence I was now sailing. My ship beat down the uncharted Atlantic coast of the peninsula to a hidden bay and dropped me off in the small boat which was to play a major role in the expedition before me. Lieutenant Tufts of the Brigade Norfolk. You're to report to Captain Quincy Wyatt without delay. The scout will escort you to his chicky. My peculiar mission had begun. As planned, my boat was being hurriedly dragged from the beach for its journey overland to the great inland lake called Okeechobee, where I hoped but hardly expected again to see it. With my odd guide, I set off for the interior and a meeting with a man I knew then only as Captain Quincy Wyatt. We rode due west for several hours through all but impenetrable country, which somehow seemed to offer no obstacle to my silent companion. Time up, sailor. You mean Captain Wyatt's here? His chick he's a piece yet. What is a chick he? You ever been to Florida before, Captain? Nope. Figured so from that fancy sword you got. Chick he's a thatched hut built on a piece of dry land called a hammock. It's a house. You mean the captain lives here? Why doesn't he stay at the garrison? Well, that's Florida for you. Do that, Captain. That's a creek ending from up Georgia Way. He's one of Quincy's boys. Hello, Charlie. Shaking hands with an Indian's like pumping a well. <coughs> Got that. Right in here, Captain. His engines smell a little gamey, Captain. They rub skunk oil on themselves to keep off the bugs and flies. strange and wondrous stream, winding its way through bright, green country. So this was the land for which we fought so fiercely, a jungle. Beautiful. Weird. Chop on some of this corn, Lieutenant. We got a piece to go yet. Oh, thanks. Speaking of Indians like you was, don't let nobody tell you them Seminoles can't shoot. Yep, since they got to get themselves guns, they learned to shoot pretty good. What does the captain live way out here for? Well, after what happened, Quincy don't like it much around soldiers. 
He don't have no truck and nobody much but his own men. I know you're hankering to ask me what did happen, but it ain't for me to tell you. And I wouldn't be asking Quincy neither if I was you. Despite myself, my curiosity was aroused. What sort of officer was this that he shunned the army in which he served? But the hot sun above me pounded the question from my brain. Then, where the stream widened into a lagoon, nestling between sky and water, was an island, shimmering like a jewel on the face of the jungle. And on it, Captain Wyatt's Chiki. Warlike, Warlike! Shout you, duck! What I told you. <coughs> oh, Jidonia. Oh, Shinkita, ho. Quincy, gay. Hello, Fetchy. Ron, you've done it. Mahi hunger? The good old way, Una. Wants to know what it's for. First time I ever seen one of them, or one of you. He's a nice looking boy. He belonged to one of those Creek Indians? That'd be Captain Wyatt's son. Oh, sorry. What's he be sorry for? Nothing, I just, uh... Where's his squaw? I'll be looking forward to meeting her. Captain Wyatt's wife weren't no squaw, Lieutenant. She was a Creek Francis, daughter of the great chief, and pretty as a picture, and you won't be meeting her. She's dead. For the first time, I saw the man with whom I was to share the most remarkable adventure of my life. Quincy Wyatt, soldier, swamp man, gentleman, savage. <laughs> Look over yonder, them two eagles. See them? Mm -hmm. Quincy never goes fishing or hunting without he brings them something. One of them sailor men to see you. Lieutenant Richard Tufts, U.S. Navy reporting, sir. Howdy, Lieutenant. Any trouble landing? No, sir. As far as I know, we were unobserved. Uh, how long do you reckon it'll take to move your boat overland to the lake? Well, before I answer that, sir, may I say that you have my sympathy? How's that? Well, my craft is only big enough to hold 40 men. Well, that's all right, because that's all the men I got left in the company. What, 40 men to go clear across Florida and retake a fortress? Why, that's suicide. Well, maybe you're right, but somebody's got to nip off the supply of guns to the Seminoles, and as long as that fort's there, the Indians are just going to keep on getting them. But an attack in small force must fail. Fort Infanta was built by General Enrico Garcia, the greatest of Spain's military architects. Why, it's impossible to take it by less than a brigade. Well, that's mighty serious what you're saying. Did you tell that to General Taylor? No. The Admiral did, and the General was quite rude to him. You know, the Admiral thinks the General is something of a drinking man. Well, if he is, he sure had more than his share when he dreamed up this harebrained scheme. Well, I'm sorry you think it's such a harebrained scheme, Lieutenant, because I'm the fellow that thought it up. And about those 40 men of mine, in the swamp, they're equal to a brigade. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll change my clothes and we'll start off to headquarters. <laughs> Well, I sure put my foot in it. A lot worse things than that you can put your foot in around here. See over yonder across that lagoon? That's the beginning of the Everglades. 
or the end, depending on which way a man's walking. You know what's in there? Swamps so deep they can swallow up a whole army and you'll never see them again. There's a lot worse things than that you can put your foot in around here. That's uh, sort of yours. Sure made a hit with my boy. He'd sure like to have it. Oh, I can understand that. I have a boy of my own just about his age back in Boston. You know what he'd give his heart for? That tomahawk you had stuck in your belt. That uh, boy of yours, is mother alive? Why, yes. He's a lucky lad. Very lucky. Sure loves that little rascal. Anything ever happened to him, he'd just wander off in the swamp and you'd never see him no more. Fortune toy. Swiftly now, we proceeded to headquarters. I waited with anticipation for my first glimpse of the officer who was now seeking to put an end to the war once and for all, General Zachary Taylor. All set, Quincy? All set. You can still back out if you want to. Nothing will stop me now but the Seminoles. If they don't, you're going to make me a very important general. Well, now, that's something I've got a mind to do. Blow down the fort, Quincy, and I'll make my move. We might see peace in this territory yet. Forward! I Sam! We're all ready for inspection, Captain. Get the replacements. The best of the army, sir. They'll have to be. Well, Petrie, they look pretty good on you. I hope I wear them as well as Corporal Mallory did, sir. Well, you wouldn't have them if you couldn't. Thank you, Captain. Glad to see you back in the line, Tibbet. Almost didn't make it, Captain, but I'm a tough man to separate from a scalp. <laughs> What's your name? James W. Tasher, sir. Ever fight in the Indians before? Yes, sir, in the Black Hawk country. Well, no need asking how you made out. You're here. And uh, what name do you answer to? Private Jessup, sir. Been long in the military? Joined up with the Massachusetts Rifles, sir. Three years, eight months, and 26 days ago. Well, I'll try to see that you finish out your enlistment. Well, Lieutenant, what do you think of them? Well, they seem to be soldiers, but they don't look like soldiers. Well, maybe not, but old Chief Akala would give a handful of pearls for the head of any one of them. He'd give a whole basket full for Quincy's. Now, say, you coming with us makes that head of yours right valuable, too. Hello, Mohair. Any complaints? It just happens that there is, sir. The food's terrible, the mattresses is bumpy, and the mosquitoes are bigger than ever, and Sergeant Shane's mean to you. Now, how the heck do you know that, Captain? Well, I'm glad to hear everything's all right, Mohair. You look very good, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Let's put him on the trail. Yes, sir. That's the trail. Hunt! Right. Hey! Make hit! What do you think of this expedition now, Lieutenant? Well, I'm reserving my opinion till we get there and back. Well, that's what we're counting on your boat for, if it floats. Scouts out. In company with this strange troop, I marched to the lake and the rendezvous with my small boat. There it is. Lake Okeechobee, the Indians call it. The big water. Fifty miles to the other shore and the other side of that is Seminole.
she seems to float. Get her underway, bosun. Aye, aye. Bring out the mainsail. Black sail, huh? Indians be less likely to see it in the moonlight, I thought. You know, Lieutenant, this scheme's getting less and less harebrained as we go along. If we run into trouble and get separated, try to make it back here. The boat will meet us tomorrow at sundown. Make tracks. All right, make tracks. All right, Go. 
Bay's out yonder. The fort ought to be over there somewhere. I've been making calculations. I figured we'd come about eight miles too far north. Let's take a look. I guess I better refigure my calculations. But the looks of those walls, I better refigure mine. When it's dark, I'll take a few men and try to reach the gates. The rest of the men wait until I get them open. Gun runners. Any kind of luck, we'll put them out of business tonight. cargo tú. Bueno, pero no te estés toda la noche.
tail squad to find the arsenal. Yes, sir. Come on. Lieutenant, take some men and spike every cannon. Right. Page three. Get your powderman out and start setting charges. We're moving out of here fast. Yes, sir. Dang fine expedition. Twar no trouble at all. We're not out of here yet. Sullivan, take some men and search every room. O'Hare? Yes, sir. How many did we lose? We're just going to count them off, sir. Give him a hand. Captain, just found the arsenal in here. Here to fight the Hundred Years' War. European made. <laughs> These renegades have been running this stuff in from all over. Set a match to it. Captain, we found some people locked up. Is this all of them? No, sir, there's some more outside. We'll get her out with the others. I can't wait for her. Yes, sir. Who is that gentleman I seem to be annoying? Well, that's Captain Wyatt, ma'am. Oh? Amelia, fetch my coat. Captain Wyatt says we can leave now. Senor, senor, thank heaven you have come. Two months we have been held captive. My poor wife and all these... Yes, colleagues. yes, you're safe now. Guns are all spiked. Out of charge is all laid, Captain. Fuse is set to light. Wait for my signal. Shane, get him out of here on the double. Yes, sir. When this fort blows, every Seminole in a hundred miles will know where we are. Can't stop. F. Carrier.
Post your guard on the flanks and plenty of scouts in the rear. You men can eat if you want to, but no fire and no smoking. If you want tobacco, chew it. Mrs. Dupre owned a plantation. The other men worked for them. Those renegades had burned them out and were holding them until they told where their money was hidden. What about her? The others don't seem to know much about her, but I judge her to be a lady of quality. Why? Because she has a servant? Speaking of swamps like you was, right over there is the Everglades. That's one swamp you don't want to ever get into, because if you do, chances are you'll never come out. Ahoy, ashore! Vamos, muchachos! En una hora estaremos a bordo. What's the matter? Something's wrong. It's gone quiet. I don't like it. Well, we're all a little bit jumpy. And just coming here fast. Big war party. Stay down. Fisher, get the rear guard out. Fight. Oh, here, Timmons, come on, come on, come on. Come on.
Tiki Hunchies. Got the mail. Signed Chief Okala. And every Indian in the Everglades is reading it. Listen to me, everybody. I guess you know we're in a heap of trouble. We're cut off from our boat, and there's only one way home, and that's through 150 miles of swamp. So we got no choice but to walk out. So we're starting right now. I don't agree with you, Captain Wyatt. I recognize that you're in command here, and I'm just a naval observer. But in a situation like this, I feel I'm entitled to a consulting opinion. What is your opinion, Lieutenant? Well, my boat's out on that lake, sir. And if I know my boatswain, he'll scour the lake front looking for us. I don't consider that there's as much danger behind us as you seem to think. I say stay here for the night, then go back and make another try to get aboard the craft. Keep talking, Lieutenant. I'm not being insubordinate, sir. I'm merely venturing an opinion as to the sound military values of... <laughs> You're a mighty lucky man. You know what kind of snake that was? A cottonmouth water moccasin. How would a lady like you know a thing like that, ma'am? I've dealt with snakes before, Lieutenant.
Now tell these creeks exactly where you last saw Captain Wyatt's party. They entered the swamp about 200 yards from the debarkation point, heading south. Akawaha, Achi Timbi, Achi Epiga, Haiofa, Fasen Hais. And that was Kogak to Ebiga. What in the Manaya I'm doing? I'm all going to live away with this. Do they know the spot? They know the spot all right. That's why they're saying Captain Wyatt has one chance in a thousand of coming out alive. Well, if anybody can find them, they can, but heaven only knows where they are now. We plunged deeper and ever deeper into the great swamp. It seemed that in fleeing death at the hands of the Seminole, we were inviting just a certain death in the rotting jungle. We'll rest here for a while. <laughs> you thinking what I'm thinking? They got no walking left in them. Of these would be all right, huh? Take too long to dig dugouts for this size party. I wasn't figuring on the whole party, just half of it. It wouldn't be healthy sitting around here. Them Indians can't be far behind. Well, they can't go any more afoot. They got to ride. Where are they riding to, Quincy? You remember them Indian burial mounds? The ones we come across looking for Major Dade? They're smack in the middle of Seminole country. Well, we ain't a linger in there. Whoever stays to build them boats ain't gonna stand much chance of lingering here. You and Monk are going overland with your platoon. I'll stay here with Peachtree's bunch. You can't do that, Captain. I ain't gonna let you stay here and get massacred. I'll stay and you and Shane go on. Look, the way we started out, I was given the orders. That's the way we finished. Say, Sullivan, if I don't get back, there's a jug of liquor in my trunk for you. And at times like this, I wish I was my cousin. He's in the cavalry. <laughs> well, cheer up, Mohair. If you get killed, maybe you'll come back as a horse. Well, if I do, don't walk in behind me, because I'll kick you right in the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got a hard march ahead of you, but you ought to make it in four days. Now, with any kind of luck, the rest of us will catch up with you. Get them moving, Shane. Good luck. All right, men. Make tricks. Get there, huh, Quincy? kind of you, Lieutenant, to share your rations with me. Not at all, ma'am. When I get those dugouts finished, perhaps we'll be dining more bountifully before too long. The first thing I want to do is eat some mushrooms cold there, the way Paul would prepare them at the Griffin Club in Savannah. In Savannah, ma'am? Why, oh, I know it very well. I was stationed there for a year. Oh, then you undoubtedly ate at the club. Well, hardly, ma'am. Young naval lieutenants seldom visit the Griffin Clubs of the world. If you are ever in Savannah again, Lieutenant, you shall eat there, I promise you. Well, 
I... I did visit the Delphian Society several times. You've been there, undoubtedly. Oh, yes, of course. The, the Tuesday evening poetry readings were splendid. Yes, I... I found them one of the best features of the society. Who are your favorite poets, Lieutenant? Oh, well, I'm uh, partial to Shelley. So am I. The latest piece I read was a marvelous ode to a bird, but for the life of me, I can't remember which bird it was. Oh, yes. Uh, wasn't it the bluebird? No, I don't believe so. Well, it'll, it'll come to me. Mighty fine conversation you're having. Interesting, too. Excuse me, ma'am. There's something I want to take care of. Mind if I join you, Captain? Well, this ain't the uh, Griffin Club, but you're welcome to sit down. Oh, then you've been in Savannah, too. No. Tell me. Don't it make you redden up talking like quality? A cracker gal like you. A cracker gal? Well, it takes a cracker to tell a cracker. What part of Georgia are you from? Okefenokee. My folks was raised on squirrel meat and pine nuts. Same as yours. How did you smart me out like that? Well, you walk. Down home, we used to tie up a gal's leg when she was 16 to get the first pair of shoes on her. That's the way it was with you, wasn't it? Still got the marks of that rope on my shin bone. You didn't pick up that highfalutin talk in Okefenokee. Where have you been wandering? Oh, Charleston, New Orleans, Savannah, wherever the gold coins roll. Well, there ain't any around here. What are you doing in this territory? I was bound out of New Orleans for Savannah when my boat was pirated by those renegades you blew up. What happened to the rest of the passengers? Perhaps the renegade leader didn't find them as interesting as he did me. How'd you get along with him? You found me in that dungeon, didn't you? He put me in there so I could reconsider. Did you? The rats were getting bigger every day. You arrived just in time. You didn't come over here just to pass the time of day. What, what, what's troubling your mind? Well, since you ask, I'm a little curious to know whether I'm going to get out of here alive. Why should you know more than anybody else? Because I've got a lot to do. I've made too many plans for too long a time to have them all end in a swamp. Well, all I can tell you to ease your mind is that I don't aim to commit suicide. I enjoyed dining with you, ma'am. I hope the uh, mushrooms was cold bad enough. Uh, what happened to your face, Lieutenant? Oh, I, uh, I ran into a branch. Them branches is murder, especially when you got no soap. Outposts and get loaded to push off. Can't be soon enough for me. Bring in Evans and Smith. The rest of you heave gear. Enjoy your swim? Seems I didn't get downstream far enough. I thought I saw some men up in the trees. Couldn't have been Seminoles. You still got your hair. You mean to say, ma'am, that some of the men were spying on you? Why, well, you should have called me. You mean you weren't there, Lieutenant? Why, ma'am. <laughs> Get down to the dugout. Captain Wyatt! Captain Wyatt!
camp here for a few hours. We rest here. Now you can eat. Thank you, Corporal. We can eat. I've been eating so much dried corn, I feel like a chicken. <laughs> Looking for something? I'm just figuring. Figuring what? How much cloth it would take to make you a pair of those tight doe skin breeches, real fitted like. And a pair of lacquered boots, swallowtail coat with a fancy shirt and a silk string tie. You'd look mighty grand walking down Drayton Street in Savannah. I might look all right walking down that street you're talking about, but I'd look like a darn fool here. Like to go to Savannah? Nope. It's too bad. I was thinking up an idea that might involve you. But I guess you like this kind of life. Well, not the way it is here especially, but it's mighty fine where I live. What's so good about it? You ought to know. You wake up in the morning and you're all fired up about going fishing and for killing a deer. So you tramp all day and sweat. And briars and seed burrs get down your neck. Then you end up full of sugars eating a squirrel or a possum. Maybe. But at night, you sleep like a king. Yes. Cold and alone. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't like to go back to that kind of living, would you? Would you? Good night, Your Majesty. You'll take the wrinkles out of your belly. Fish and turtle. Nothing but fish and turtle. I'm about to grow gills. Well, if you want to hunt game, you better do your shooting noise a long ways from here. Well, I'd just soon fire a shot right now and get it over with. We're never getting out of here. See, I don't like to hear that kind of talk. Listen to me, all of you. Sergeant Shane and his platoon are waiting for us at those Indian burial mounds. Do you know where we are from there? Within walking distance of my island, and that's safety. From there, we'll send a runner on to headquarters, and we'll get out of this alive. Now, eat those fish and get moving. Fellas heard what the captain said. Let's eat some of this good fish here. Dreaming of Savannah? How did you know? Is that what's most important to you? It's very important. 
Is that all that's important to you? Let me alone. Stay away from me. You sure fancy that Savannah quality, don't you? I don't fancy them. I hate them. Oh, so that's the burr under your hide. You want to get even with the whole town. Not the whole town, just one man. He the one that tied up your leg? I tied up my own leg. He's the one that put the shoes on me. Fancy shoes? That wasn't the way it started. That's the way it worked out. You had no objections? I was too young to have much objection about anything. My father had some. But he was a cracker. And rich folks know how to handle crackers. I found him down on the levee one morning, dead. They said he'd been run over by a wagon. But I never saw wagon wheels that would leave lash marks on a man. You got a way of writing that? I do. I've put a lot of years in this, and now I'm ready. When I get back there, they'll find out quality's not the only one that can swing a black snake whip. When you were talking to me yesterday, measuring me for that suit, where did I fit in? Was it in your mind that I was going to help you swing that whip? Maybe. I'll see you at the dugout. Day after day, we floated toward our meeting with Sergeant Shane and his men. Then, late one afternoon, as we rounded a bend in the stream, all became suddenly still. Not even the birds uttered a cry. It was difficult to breathe. The air seemed weighted with death. We needed not to be told that we were at last approaching the mounds the legendary burial place of the Seminoles. should have been here. Yeah. I don't like it. Man, I don't like it at all. We'll wait. Interesting thing about the way the Seminoles bury their warriors, they sit them up and put war paint on them, set a bowl of fresh food alongside of them, and then stick their favorite weapon in their hands, and then they cover them up. With a great chief like that over yonder, they throw in the first newborn child to be born after he died. Hmm. What did they do a thing like that for? Well, they believe when a man dies, the spirit leaves the body and enters that of the first newborn. And regarding a chief highly like that, they don't want the spirit to be passed on down to somebody that ain't fit to carry it. Can I see you, Captain? It ain't that the men are afraid, Captain, but 
there were thinking that maybe we ought to pull out of here. They know better than that. We're waiting for Shane. Yeah, sure, but they were figuring that since Shane was supposed to be here ahead of us, that, well, maybe he ain't coming. We'll wait. You can tell him that. thinking like the others that we ought to pull out of here? Are you asking me or telling me? Both. You're pretty fond of that sergeant and that old trapper, aren't you? I'm pretty fond of the men I've got here, too. That makes it difficult. And there's you wanting to get back to Savannah so bad. What do you want me to say? That I never want to get back to Savannah? Why are you even asking me? made up your mind already. I know we're staying. Captain Wyatt! Somebody's coming! Right out. Get under cover. Get back. Where's Shane? What happened? I was out front leading a party. The first thing I know, the Seminoles closed in behind me. They let me go by, but they opened up on the platoon. You never seen nothing like it in your life. Anybody get away? Shane? I don't know. It's like a slaughterhouse. Seminoles, Captain, they're coming this way. Come on, let's get out of here. Get moving quick. Can you walk, Monk? I had plenty of practice. Forget about the dugouts. They'll be looking for us there. Hurry up. Move along.
got on Shane's gear. She was not the Easter man. She was not the Easter man. I'll make him talk, Captain. That won't do it. We know how to handle these varmints, Monk. Tie him up. Here it is, Quincy of Butte. Watch yourself. Careful. She were not, sir. She were not, sir, Chinitza. Gonna car pan up to the next door, y'all pan up to Tochan. Can I go out that pops out, you know? There's a war village near here. Some of our men are in it. Well, maybe they're still alive. Maybe there's a hundred Seminoles there, too. They're out looking for us. Only a few guards left. Can we believe them? We'll soon find out. Peachtree, take two men and stay with the women. Now you come with me. We found the men, but I wish we hadn't. Next time, all I see, I ain't going to kill him. I'm going to.
Better get moving. I'll take it, Captain. No use, he's dead. Get moving. Monk, take them to my island. It's only a short march from here. They'll be safe there. I'll hold them off. Captain, you get out of here. I'll lead them away from you. Give it. Come on, you rat devils, follow me! Give it! Here we are, come and get us! Come on, you red bird dogs, slip over here! Captain Wyatt. No sign of him, sir. Abandon the search. Cross Wyatt and his men off the roster. Were you able to reach his island and get his boy out? No, sir. There's a solid wall of Indians between here and that island. The entire Seminole nations are bursting out of the Everglades. We'll launch the invasion there and save his boy if we can. We owe Wyatt that much. Colonel, pulling your outposts, we'll move the brigade as soon as assembled. <laughs> Slow up now. We're almost to my island. What are you waiting around for? Come on, make tracks. We've got a piece to go. Hold on. We ain't running anymore. We're going to stay right here and we're going to fight. They're going to kill us anyway, so let's take some of them with us. Now dig in and we'll take them on right here. Yeah. All right, come on. Take 
Non, oui, si tu m'as. Hold your fire. Looks like we discouraged them. It's getting dark. They still don't like fighting at night. But they'll come a-hooping and hollering at dawn. Makes me fonder than ever of moonshine. Pass the word. Watch out for tricks. like this is going to end up in very strange hands. The best laid schemes of mice and men oft times go astray. I had intended it for Captain Wyatt's son. His son? Oh, that's right. You didn't know about him. Yeah. He was a fine-looking boy of about six. Had black hair and brown snapping eyes. Captain was married to a Creek princess. She was pretty as a picture. Now they're both gone. Maybe he's not dead. Maybe he got away. That's what I tried to tell myself about his mother until I found her murdered. So that's why you fight them. That's why you hate the Seminoles. It wasn't Seminoles that killed her. It was soldiers. Soldiers? Soldiers killed her? Then how can you... You're wondering how that could have happened. How I could be one of them. Aren't you? You're wondering how I could live without taking revenge. Well, they were young. They were liquored up. They were new to this territory, and to them, all the Indians looked alike. Sure, I could have killed them. I could have killed every man in a blue uniform, but if you're a certain kind of person, something clicks inside of you, and you hold on. You know you can't go through life trying to get even. You know, you can't hold a grudge forever.
it to him. There'll be more coming. Keep low now. Watch yourselves. Daylight, then they'll be coming at us. I'm figuring we'll take about a hundred of them with us. Maybe nobody will be taking anybody except one. You go back with the women. In case anything goes wrong, you know what to do. And don't be chicken hearted at the end. Don't do it. Don't try it, Quincy. You ain't fit now. Do like I tell you. Go on. Are you a woman that you send your brave to fight? Do you fear, Wyatt, that you will surround yourself by your entire tribe before you face me? Why is he challenging him? Well, if Quincy kills him, maybe the other Seminoles will lose heart and run away. Come out of hiding and face me where I meet all crocodiles in the water. Meet me with your own weapon, the knife.
been a great day. Yeah. Yes. It is. It sure is. I just want to make sure it's really you. I'd given you up for dead a hundred times. Well, I'd given up seeing that boy of mine. Well, we found him about ten miles from here, hiding in the jungle. It just goes to show you, it's almost impossible to kill a lion. It wasn't because they didn't try. Well, after what you did, I think even a general will be safer in there. If I'm not out in a month, come in and get me. for him to have this, if he still wants it. Cut that, cut that. There you are. Well, you might as well be toting this back to your young one. Thanks a lot. I'll tell him the story behind it. I hope everything turns out the way you want it up in Savannah. I don't think it will, because I'm not going. Can't hold a grudge forever. <laughs> 